back out and go get a bit of a... Let's go. Come with me, come with me. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. Well, we got the intro good. If you just go through the bit after We'll do it again anyway. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to Lark TV. And thank you for joining us in another video. Well, we hope you enjoyed that cold start of the Subaru Impreza rally car there. It sounded quite uh, quite nice on the cold startup. But what we're doing today is we are just staying local. We thought we'd just do a little, a short video about the Subaru Impreza rally car that we did the edge speed stages in. We will be doing more rallies in it, but we just wanted to take you through the spec of it really, just give you some more information about the car. And you know, if you guys want to know anything, then drop some comments below, ask some questions, and we can do our best to answer them. But uh, let's have a quick look round the Subaru Impreza. So we are inside the Subaru Impreza rally car. Um, as a lot of you will have noticed, this is uh, a GC8 model, so it's like a nine from 1995. So it's a few years old, but it's what a lot of people class as the classic Impreza, certainly from the early Colin McRae days. And uh, it's a great looking car, great sounding car. We've owned it for probably about three and a half years uh, with Steve Ball. We've done bits and pieces on it in that time. But we've got it up to a spec now where we can do a rally, as you'll have seen a few weeks ago when we did the Edge Speed Stages rally. Inside, you know, the dashboard and everything is fairly standard. We've stripped out a lot of the interior. This is a switch panel that was already installed when we got the car. We will probably upgrade all this. It needs a little bit of tide, you know. In terms of upgrades, we've put a new steering wheel on it. Got a very nice OMP steering wheel. We have got the electronic centre differential working because this car is now, when we got it, it had a five speed um, RA gearbox. It's now got a six speed STI gearbox with electronic sensor differential. So that's been working really great. And this gearbox is pretty much bomb proof. Here we've got a fly off handbrake. So this is actually works on the hydraulic system. There's a separate hydraulic line that goes into the rear brakes. So unlike your conventional handbrake, which basically works on a cable, and it's not really that good if you want to do handbrake turns. It's all right for stopping the car on a hill and holding it. But this thing gives you really, really- If you want to have some fun. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. When you yes. get that, you can lock the back wheels up. And what you're going to see here is, this is a little switch that links to the centre differential. So as you pull it, it disengages the centre differential so you don't lock the back. The, it's not still trying to drive the back wheels at the same time as you're trying to pull the handbrake, because that would be pretty useless. This thing's got a multi-point roll cage. It's fully welded in. It's not sort of like welded in plates that the cage is bolted to. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but this is a fully welded in cage. It goes through the actual bulkhead of the car into the engine bay and onto the top mounts on the front uh, struts. So that gives, it just makes, not only is it a safety feature, it makes the shell a lot more rigid as well. So on this panel here, there's lots of switches. The heater switch, forget that, it doesn't work because we've taken the heater out. However, what we have done, this switch now controls the windscreen. We've got a heated windscreen in here, which in a rally car is a great addition because particularly when you're rallying through the winter and it might be raining, you guys are in the stage, you're, you, you know, you're generating a lot of heat and invariably the windscreen will start steaming up. This switch is the DCCD, the driver's centre differential, so you can switch that on off. You don't have to have it switched on, certainly not on the road if you don't want to. When it's switched off it's basically just like a standard split between the front and rear, um, how much torque it's sending to the front and rear wheels. This switch here, we shall switch on in a moment, we'll let you have a listen. This is the anti-lag switch. We only really use this when we are in a rally, so this basically keeps the turbo spinning. Um, helps you keep the boost pressure up and just overall it gives you a little bit more performance with the car. Uh, we've got two pumps actually, although we're only showing one there, it has got two, it's got a backup pump as well. So you can switch the actual fuel pumps on and off here. To get this thing started, um, you will normally find it like this. So the sequence is, you have a master switch, turn the master switch on. This is a secondary like knockout switch, so if you push that down, that will push your ignition on. And if you push it, make sure you've got the clutch in and hit the fire button and away you go. And that is how you start this car.
So these are the new, but not new, because it was probably the first thing we actually changed in this car, wasn't it? So these are the new Cobra bucket seats that we've got in here. They are called the... <laughs> Profit Suzuka, I think. Aren't oh, it's cool. Yeah, Suzuka, Suzuka Profit. Su Suzuka Profit. Yeah. The co-drivers one is a bit of a more regular fit, whereas the drivers one is a much tighter um, around your around your hips Steve and ball. your shoulders. Yeah. And this is a more kind of universal fit for the for the co-driver. After being informed by my lovely assistant, now just learnt something new about the history of these seats. But apart from having a fire extinguisher, as probably you have to have by regulations, obviously. But we have a six-point Sparco racing harness, which <laughs> properly anchors you into this seat. I mean, I'm not joking, I'll, I'll clamber in now and give you a, a bit of a tutorial on how to put one of these on. So you've got your two, uh, what would you call these? Lap straps. Your lap straps, yeah. You've got your lap straps, right. and you've got your main one here. You pop your two lap straps, one into each side, and then you grab these, and then they are very tight, probably just because they're new. You got one over one shoulder, pop it in, get your other one, loosen it off a bit so you can fit it around, pop it in, and then pull down on these. And let me just give you a quick demonstration of how rooted you are into the seat. <laughs> and as well with the high sided seats you really don't move at all but then to take it off it's pretty much just this big thing here either way you just flick it and you're free and out you go and out you get which in most cases is easier said than done because <laughs> with the roll cage in these cars it's very hard to get in and out of unless you have many years of experience like my father here and Mr. Steve Ball. However, I am less educated, so I kind You're of doing just, all right, uh, kid. I'm doing, You're doing all right. right. I'm doing all right. Here we've got a um, Subaru Boxer engine. The engine we haven't touched since we bought it. However, what we can tell you is, whenever we've had it on the dyno, it performs very well. I don't know if you can see in there. This thing's got six-pot AP Racing calipers and larger vented disc, and boy, does it stop. We've lowered the car. It's on ProDrive Bilstein 50mm platform struts and the guys down at Agispeed took all them off, serviced them, lowered it and set it all up for, for tarmac and it's uh, it handles very well, very well. Got Brembo's on Got there. Brembo's on the rear. Now when we upgraded to the 6-speed STI box, you basically, it's a whole conversion, you have to buy the gearbox, the prop shaft, the drive shafts, or the rear differential and what the car that the donor car we got it off it had everything on it including the new brakes so on the back you've got two pop brembos with cross drilled vented discs and again that certainly helps it stop very quickly so here we are thank you so much for watching this video and we have had uh, awesome day. Great day, haven't we? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We actually kept it fairly local. I mean, we've only really been down the road, haven't we, from where we live. But it was just a great opportunity to share with you guys sort of like a bit more about the Impreza, tell you yeah. a bit more about the specification of it. We've been talking it. about it loads, but we've never yeah, really done it. Yeah, you, you've seen us what? rallying it and things, but you know, we've never really done anything, but we managed to get it quite dirty, so we just nipped into this really exotic location of <laughs> Morrison's. <laughs> petrol station so we've got all the all the mud off it and everything haven't we it was relatively clean but we managed to make a right mess of it down the uh, <laughs> the back roads a minute ago that was full of mud guys people viewers subscribers we hope you've enjoyed this video uh, yes. there's lots more to come oh yeah there's motorsport, always more to come motorsport and non-motorsport um yeah, keep always. tuning in keep coming back uh, we told you about the spec of this vehicle but if there's anything particularly you'd like us to do with it it's early days for us with the Impreza mm. we are still learning it you know we want to get it quicker there are yeah, some definitely. mods that we're going to be doing to it but you've got to keep tuning back in if you want to see what modifications we do certainly uh, later this year or definitely in the new year we will, we'll be back out in it we'll be doing more rallies so we want you to follow the journey with us so yeah. like subscribe turn notifications and um, yeah. see you in the next video